The Speedy B Mario 5 that I've got here has become a very popular frame in FPV. That is partly because it is cheap, you can get it as low as $34, but it is also highly configurable as well. Speedy B have released it in two versions, you can get it in the Quad X or the Dead Cat like I've got here, but what's been clever about the release is Speedy B have allowed you to buy the accessories in additional add-on packs. Not only can you buy it in the kits with the frame, but you can buy them separately as well, allowing you to upgrade them later. Now, when I reviewed this frame a few weeks ago, it was only available in either the light version for $34 or the advanced version for $40. There is now, though, a new pro version that adds some additional accessories specifically designed for the DJI O3 ear unit, but some additional protection and bling for the frame as well. And if you've already bought the Speedy B, don't worry, you don't have to buy the whole new frame because you can buy this new upgrade kit for the pro version separately as well what we're going to do today is take a look at the new version they've sent me a quad x version of the frame as well as the new pro kit with it as well and what i'm going to do is walk you through what's different on that compared to the original frame and explain to you what the new options are now, just to be crystal clear, Speedy B did send me this frame and this new one over for free. They have not, though, paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so in the kit I've got here, I've got the Mario 5 frame XH Lite. So that's the frame kit itself. It comes in this bag like I talked about in my original review. We then have the original spare parts kit, which is this one here, which comes with all the TPU mounts, the side brackets like I showed on the original frame. But now we have this, which is the new kit, which has all of the extras specifically for what they're saying, O3 or digital. This has the side panels and everything else. Now, I'm not going to go through the complete assembly of this in this video because I did that in the first review. What I'm going to do in this video is show you the differences between this and the original one. What I'll do is I'll put this together off camera and then I'll jump in and show you some of the bits. If I just open the bag with the frame in, again, Lots of good recycling here. We've got the arms, the plates, exactly the same before in this shrink wrap packaging. We've got our additional frame parts, which is our feet for the arms. We've got our side plates. We've then got all of the screws. We've got the mounts for the camera up front, we've got the silicon mount as well as our standoffs and again it's nice to see that they do include a battery pad. In this kit, and I'm not going to open up this one, what I'll do instead is jump over to my pre-built one. There we go, just come out the oven. You can see that we have our aluminium standoffs at the front, you have that integrated TPU GoPro mount there with our battery pass-through cable. You've got those ear ducts at the front there at the sides. You've got the TPU piece here on the bottom and then all of that TPU pieces at the back. Again, we've got an XT60 mount there if we want it rather than bring our cables through the front. We've got our single antenna mount as well because this one was really more designed for using with analog than it was digital, although you could absolutely put digital on this because it does have those silicon mount plates is up front. This is the dead cat version. So this one is the X from the look of it. So there is going to be a bit of difference. And then we have these additional parts, which we'll open up and take a look at next. And then I'll get that frame together. Now in this kit is a number of different things. We have the LEDs for the side of the frame because what would a Speedy B frame be without some bling? We have our side covers, which appear to be for our flight stack. You've got a battery strap, one of those sticky battery straps there as well, which is good to see. We've got some cable protectors for our ESC. We've got some additional screws, some TPU pieces. Not sure what they're for. We'll figure that out. And then we've got our aluminium side pieces that are for the O3 ear unit. You can see these are actually machined to accept the O3 ear unit directly in it. So if I just grab my test unit from over here on the bench, you can see that the O3 fits in just like that at the sides. It does go over it on each side. As these are made of aluminium, 
The idea is to try and offer some heat dissipation. Let me just do that again, just to show you. They do go a certain way around, so let me put that one that side there. There we go. You can now see that this one on this side has a cutout for the USB-C port, as well as a slot down there for trying to get the SD card out. What I will say is you're not going to get that SD card out, though, without a pair of tweezers, that's for sure, because if you just look at the depth there, and then you've got this piece that goes on this side. And again, what you would do is mount the O3A unit to this and it just offers some additional metal work that in theory is going to help with cooling. Now, as I mentioned already in this video, I'm not going to walk you through the complete build. I actually did that in my original review and there will be a link to that in the description. In this video instead, I'm going to use a little bit of magic. So here we go. So here it is, all done, and as you can see, it is fully assembled. Now I will pop the top cover off in a second just so you can have a look. Now I've got both the original dead cat here next to me and the new one. So this is the X, this is the dead cat. You can clearly see the difference there in the back end styles between them. If we look at the front end as well, there's going to be quite a difference in the prop behavior. If I just put it directly on top, you can see there that the X props come far more forward than you do on the dead cat. So if you're going to go for this for O3 filming, you're going to want to go for the dead cat, but you can then fit this accessory kit as well. Now, this is how this one came with the air vents on the side there, as well as the TPU mounts on the back. This is the fully tripped out bling version. So I've got that O3 air unit mounted in the back. I will show you when I finish an overview of this frame, some bits about this frame that are interesting, including this piece here. You've then got these side protectors with the built-in LEDs. I can't power it up because I haven't got a stack to put in this at this time to show you, but you do have these plastic sides. These do have a screw for access. I do prefer it when these things type the clip, although they do clip on this side, but you're not going to be able to unclip it because it tucks in behind there. You've then got your antenna mount at the back. I've only popped the O3 antenna just down there. That's the Flyfish RC one. That would come up into the mount there. And there's a little piece included to mount your DJI O3 antenna as well. There's no issues with cable length on this with regards to O3. So you can see I've got the O3 ear unit in the back and the camera up front there. Fits in absolutely fine. And overall, it's just a minor improvement over that original version of the frame. In fact, the frame is the same. It's just an accessory kit that you now get. So you can still build it like you see here with the original Mario 5. But if you want to, you can sort of trip it up with these additional pieces here. Now, just showing you with the top plate off, you can see there we've got our 30 by 30 mounting pattern and our O3E unit that's mounted directly onto these aluminium standoffs, and these replace our back mounts there. Overall, this is a really nice frame. It has become a very popular choice for people, not only because of the cost, but I think it's actually a fairly feature-rich frame as well. It has lots of bling options like you see here, and for the cost, it really is hard to beat. What I will say with regards to this metalwork on the back, it does come with some downsides. So in the sense of you are going to need some tweezers to get that SD card in and out on that O3E unit. If you look down in there, it's not the easiest thing to get to. It remains to be seen what effect this will actually have on cooling. I cannot comment. I haven't tested it. I haven't flown it. It obviously is mounting that air unit to a larger aluminium structure which should help dissipate more heat but there isn't really any thermal compound there there's nothing to directly transfer so you're talking about passive cooling onto that with regards to airflow there are these sort of veins in the side that should help with movement i'm not going to sit here and tell you this helps make it cooler i simply don't know I don't think it's going to cause any problems either though, so I don't believe you're going to have to worry about the temperatures of your ear unit with this in place. And it definitely should help because it's adding more thermal mass around the ear unit itself. 
Now, I already have my review of this frame, which I will link to in the description. I'm not going to cover everything again in this video. However, what I will do when I finish talking about the pricing on this is leave you with some thoughts having put this frame together and just explain again a few of the features which I think are very good on this frame compared to some of the others. But I strongly suggest you watch my initial review where I go into a lot more depth on things like the carbon fiber plate sizing with regards to the overall how it is to put together and things like that. Now, price-wise, as I've said, this frame is available for as little as $34. At the moment, they're not showing stock of the dead cat light version, but you can get the X version in the light for $34. You then have the dead cat advanced version for $39.99. That is the version I showed in my last review, which is this one here, or you can get it in the X version for the same price as well. If you want to buy the Pro version that I've shown you here today, you can get that for $54. There it is, $53.99, or you can get it in either the dead cat or the standard X. If you did though already buy this frame, you can upgrade it. You can get the upgrade kit A, which is all of the bits that you see on this one, which is the TPU antenna pieces, the GoPro mount at the front, as well as the air ducts at the front and things like that. That is available for $9.99. Or if you want to get the B kit, which is the part that I've shown you here today, that's available for an additional $16.99. That includes those O3 heat sinks at the back that you've got here, the side cover plates. And again, the great thing about this frame is Speedy B is giving you the choice on what you want to build it into. And instead of forcing you down certain roads, you can buy the standalone version and then choose the accessory kit you want. Now, if you have found it interesting, now if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. Before I leave you with some final thoughts on things, I just want to say if you have found this video useful, please don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. As I've said, my review is in the description. If you want to support the channel, please also consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well. Now, what I'm going to do is leave you with some thoughts having put this frame together and just show you some interesting bits. Some of this is covered in my original review, but some of it isn't. Now, one of the first big interesting features about this frame is the way the arms are set up. Now, I've got them here on the base plate, and what we've got is four arms that all have the same cutout in the middle. So there are three screws per arm, and what they do is they meet together in the middle here like this. You then have two outer screws that go through the mid plate into the standoffs, and a center screw that goes through into the mid plate into a captive nut. Now, the nice thing is none of these screws are near the stack, so if you did need to replace an arm, you only need to remove two screws, the center screw and the one on each side. Yes, it may loosen the standoff on one side when you do it, but it won't affect the overall rigidity of the frame. What's quite cool, though, is the setup they have here for that in the center, because not only is there a center screw that holds it, these arms all press up against these little vertical carbon fiber inserts that you put into the frame. You place them in like that, and they actually lock the whole frame together together and when you're pressing on the arms like this they're pushing against those center pieces and what's also cool is there's a nice big space in the middle here for your capacitor. Also included in this little kit is these side pieces with these LEDs that are designed to attach to the Speedy B flight controller. Now assembling these looks to be fairly straightforward. I'm not exactly sure if it's meant to go this way around like that there or the opposite way around, but what you could do is actually push them into the slot and then they have this little bit of sticky tape here. I'm gonna do it the other way around because to me that seems more natural because it would hinge out the other way as well. So I'm just gonna push that in like that. You can then see that that's showing through on that side there. And then you've got this little bit of sticky clear covering which I'm guessing is just there to go over the back of it and hold it in place to stop it easily falling out. And just showing you that now from above with it fitted you can see the LED in there and then you've simply got the wires left in the frame to attach to the SpeedyB flight controller. Now in this video I'm not going to be putting the flight controller in. I don't actually have a spare one. It's in a different frame at the moment but you can see that they're there available on both sides. Now mounting the O3 into this looks quite straightforward. So this plate goes onto either side of our O3 ear unit and we need to remove the screws that are there. And there are some screws in the kit like that that I hope are replacements for this. Let me just take one of these out and have a look if it appears to be the same thread length. That 
does. That looks to be good. So, okay, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is take out the two of these on this side. And then I'm going to mount my O3A unit there. And screw that down and in. Oh, that's not the right screw. There we go. So it's the right screw, just wasn't the right uh, fitting on my driver. And there's holes for that either side. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then we're going to mount that in the frame. Okay, so the O3 is installed. You can see on this side here, there's a little hole there for the bind button. And then if I flip it over, you've got a cutout for the USB-C as well as a little gap there for the micro SD card. You're going to need some tweezers though to get a card into that one. Now, on the bottom of this, there are some holes which line up with the holes in the frame. So then what we do is go in like that. And then this will actually mount into here. Now, what's interesting about this, and I've just realized this, this replaces the back standoffs. Whereas in the original build I had, I put the standoffs there. This actually replaces those standoffs and the side panels mount to that. So I need to undo some of the work that I've done and I'll come back and show you. And there we go, you can see it's installed there. The side plates then screw to that either side and I've probably shown that already in the overview earlier on in the video. But as you can see, it just slots here at the back of the frame and yeah, hopefully offer a bit more cooling.